Item number, SCP-362, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-362 is to be stored in a polypropylene bag and kept in a standard lockbox. This lockbox is to be kept in a dedicated room with no materials pertaining to other SCPs, including handwritten and or typed files, smartphones, PDAs, post-it notes, memos, etc. Electronic devices with access to the internet and or on-site intranet are forbidden from entering and or accessing said room. Containment chambers should include non-relevant books and magazines, along with blank notebooks, for observation purposes. Only persons possessing level 1 clearance or lower may receive authorization to enter the containment chamber and wear SCP-362 which shall be done for research purposes and for said purposes only. Dr. and O5 possess keys unlocking SCP-362's lockbox. No other copies may be made without O5 authorization. Two security personnel must bar access to anyone not possessing the required clearance, and at least one surveillance camera must monitor each of the following for both research and security purposes. Exterior of Chamber Entryway interior of chamber entryway, lockbox, and the chamber itself. Description SCP-362 is a light blue t-shirt bearing the logo of a children's Saturday morning cartoon television program, popular in the late 1980s and early 90s. It is a size M, medium, with short sleeves. Its color appears to have faded and was likely a darker shade of blue. Its tag states the t-shirt is made of 100% cotton. Testing has confirmed this statement. Despite its apparent age, it is in good condition, apart from said fading. Its collar and sleeves are not worn or threadbare, and it has no holes or rips. Test subjects wearing SCP-362 have unanimously reported no feelings of discomfort, unease, or foreboding. Five subjects, whose ages range from 22 to 35, have expressed what can perhaps be informally phrased as amused nostalgia upon donning SCP-362. In tests, it has been worn as briefly as 3.6 seconds and as long as days, with a mean duration of hours. Aside from the obvious inconvenience of wearing an item of clothing longer than a few days, the test subject in each case reported normal emotional responses. Upon donning SCP-362, its effects are immediate and almost invariable among tests, the only significant variable being the duration test subjects must endure the phenomenon before it ends. Immediately after pulling SCP-362 off over his or her head, the test subject reports several to dozens of humanoid figures suddenly appearing in the room with them. The figures appear after the instant the test subject's vision becomes obscured by the material of SCP-362 passing over the subject's eyes as it is removed. These figures present with absolutely indeterminate features. Most to all of these figures seem to fix their attention on the test subject, and unless approached will stand motionless. A test subject who moves around the test chamber will find that these figures also move, but only to keep their attention fixed on the subject and or to avoid physical contact with the subject. These figures will go as far as to phase through the confines of the test chamber to avoid contact with any living thing. The figures themselves have been variously described as blurry, mirages, and most commonly, as shadowy or made of shadows. Often, a few of these figures will seem to take no interest in the test subject, but will instead explore their surrounding environment. They will appear to touch items, rifle through piles of paper, page through books, operate computers, etc. Twice, a figure reportedly has appeared to handle and operate a device, like a Geiger counter, with which the figure seems to scan objects or take readings for the duration of the sighting. Upon review of archived episodes of the show appears never to have referenced or depicted anything resembling the figures which have appeared to all test subjects. After experimentation, test subjects, even those who expressed eagerness and or amusement at the prospect of wearing SCP-362, express unease when prompted to discuss the show. In light of Incident SCP-3622, 
and in order to avoid cross-contamination of SCPs and prevent security breaches, no items, information, or personnel of level 2 clearance or higher may ever be present in SCP-362's chamber prior to, during, or immediately after experimentation. Furthermore, under no circumstances may SCP-362 be worn by any person for longer than nine days. Addendum Immediately prior to said incident, test subject had worn SCP-362 for 31 days. As per research protocol, test subject had not been informed of the effects of donning SCP-362. Upon removal, Site experienced a containment breach, which lasted minutes when primary and secondary power systems simultaneously failed. All debriefed personnel at said site reported experiencing feelings of dread during the breach, many of whom were trapped in rooms without power or means of egress when failsafe systems activated. Some personnel reported the sensation that other persons inhabited the room with them during the breach, despite being alone immediately beforehand. Many personnel felt as though they were being watched. Immediately after the breach, upon restoration of secondary power, site personnel discovered files scattered, books open, and notes in disarray. IT division reported that several computers and other devices had accessed data expunged. Test subject expired due to ventricular fibrillation minutes after secondary power failed. Autopsy revealed abnormally high adrenaline levels in subject's bloodstream. Authorization to upgrade SCP-362 to Euclid class pending. Interview log for Experiment 3621. Interviewer Dr. with Dr. Test subject D-1022 Time 5 minutes Data expunged Doctor Please describe your surroundings. D-1022. I don't know. It's like an office, I guess. Papers. Notepads. There's a box in front of me. Doctor. Is anyone in the room with you? D-1022. Chuckling. I thought you were watching me. You know, through cameras? Doctor. We are. Is there anyone in the room with you? D-1022. Is there supposed to be? Ain't no one in here but me. Doctor. Thank you. Please use the key provided to open the box in front of you, then put on what you find inside. D-1022. After a brief silence. What? It's just a shirt. Oh, hell yeah! Ah oh, man, I used to watch that show all the time. Doctor. Please put it on. D-1022. Sure thing. <laughs> Can I keep it? Doctor, with some amusement. I'm afraid not. D-1022. Show us the shit. Subject sings what has been identified as the theme song of said children's program as he puts on SCP-362. D-1022. Okay, it's on. So, what now? Doctor, you'll receive further instructions in five minutes. Until then... You may busy yourself with whatever you find in the room. Subject swivels back and forth in his chair as he hums aforementioned tune. At T minus three minutes, he draws humanoid figures with a pen. Doctor, can you tell me why you've drawn those figures? D-1022, just keeping busy like you said. Doctor, yes, but why those particular figures? D-1022, what? You're telling me you've never watched- Doctor. We reviewed some episodes, yes. D-1022. Pointing. This is- Come on, man. Don't tell me you don't see the resemblance. Doctor. With amusement. Oh, yes, of course. It's the very likeness of him. D-1022. Pfft. Whatever. I'm a good artist. Doctor. Time is up. You may remove that item of clothing. D-1022. All right. Subject removes SCP-362 over his head. The instant he can see again, D-1022 stumbles backwards against the desk behind him. D-1022. Oh, shit. Doctor. What's wrong? D-1022. What is this? What's going on? 
Doctor, please describe your surroundings. D-1022, who are all these people? Doctor, please describe what you see. D-1022, they're, they're watching me. They're ghosts or something. Get me out of here. Doctor, you are not in any danger. Please describe them in further detail. D-1022, what do you want? What do you want? Subject rushes forward. D-1022, you want a piece of this? Stop f***ing moving! Doctor, you are not in any danger. Please do not attack them. Doctor to researcher inaudible to D-1022. If he provokes them, maybe we'll get some new data. D-1022 continues to turn and lunge at unseen opponents for 16 seconds of silence. Then, D-1022, where'd they go? Doctor, they're gone? Describe how they went. D-1022, they just went. Just one minute they're there and then, what were they? D-1022 begins to shiver visibly. Doctor, is something wrong? Is it colder in the room? To researcher, can I get a temperature reading? Researcher, overlapping. It's normal. No change. Doctor, D-1022, is it colder in the room than it was before? D-1022, get me out of here. I'm not telling you anything else until you let me out. Data expunged. Experiment logs. 362-E005 Date 0306 2000 D2323 Recruited specifically for this experiment due to his skill at dart throwing. War SCP-362 for 5 minutes. After effects lasted 2 minutes and 36 seconds. During the period, D2323 was encouraged to throw darts at the figures and report verbally on results. Due to panic which D2323 experienced, subject utilized only 1 minute and 6 seconds of time available to him. Findings seem to confirm hypothesis based on previous experiments. Figures will phase through walls, blink in and out of visibility, and or move more quickly than seems possible in order to avoid contact with either biological objects or non-biological objects introduced into the chamber with hostile intent. Data expunged. 362-E012 Date 05-12-2000 44 D-Class personnel introduced into chamber prior to experimentation. Subjects became claustrophobic. Staff introduced a mild tranquilizing gas into chamber to avoid compromising the experiment. Afterward, D-3197 wore SCP-362 for 5 minutes and, during that time, led the other participants in a chorus of the television show's theme song. This appears to have been the result of introducing the gas into the chamber, and is likely not an effect of SCP-362, though further experimentation may be necessary to confirm this hypothesis. After D-3197 was instructed to remove SCP-362, he reported seeing figures for approximately 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Immediately upon removal, Nine D-Class personnel disappeared from the chamber. D-3197 reported that, where the vanished D-Class personnel had stood, the figures appeared in their place. Remaining D-Class personnel exhibited signs of panic, despite lacking the ability to see the figures themselves. In order to avoid a possible containment breach due to D-Class personnel overcoming the effects of the tranquilizer and causing damage to the test chamber and or each other, a paralytic agent was introduced into the room. Incident Log, SCP-3623 Date, Undisclosed After Experiment 362-E012, researchers have identified anomalous data appearing on terminals during SCP-362 experimentation. First sample located on Terminal X's hard drive after post-experimentation scan. Two more samples generated during E014 and E015. Current hypothesis posits a correlation between missing D-Class personnel and content of anomalous data. Find a sample of said data attached. 
I was one who sang and one who watched the song, and now we watch the song and watch for signs. It is 2.957, it is 3.6602, it is 5.5. Repeating, it is 5, it is 4.3. It is 10,055,092.3, it is repeating. These are signs, there are more signs, but these are signs we have seen when we watch the song. The song. We see the song at all times, always at each time we see the song we have and duly note the sign of 3.6602 and the sign of 5.5 repeating it is repeating. These are the signs. 3.6602, 5.5 repeating. 2.957, 5, 4.3, 10,055,093.3. We are watching the signs at all times. We are watching then and now, and now we duly note that we are watching. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-361, Bronze Liver, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.